welcome back to the A to Z of archaeology. Today is the letter I, and that means illegal trade. Now, as we've just seen, I've just been on uh, my own mission to liberate coins and gems from a five-star security museum in the dead of night. And uh, it was very, very successful. Except I didn't really do it. I, I, I shot it in here, I'm sorry to say. And... Um, the, uh, the, the the treasure that I liberated it was actually my own my own treasure chest. Um, now I actually find the treasure within to be quite pretty, um, but many people wouldn't. So it's all about taste. But nonetheless, I was trying to um, trying to highlight. I was trying to highlight the topic of today's discussion. Now, um, illegal trade uh, is the is the trade in uh, artifacts and objects of historical interest, which um, tries to get around laws uh, to do with the the, 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 uh, the proper study and the proper storage of archaeology and history. Indeed, often the key role in a, an illegal trade network is to remove an artefact from its context and therefore divorce it forever from where it's come from. Unfortunately, the illegal trade networks often have their roots in times of extreme violence. Illegal trade is the dark side of archaeology, and often the illegal trade network in objects and artefacts begins in extremely violent circumstances, with people looting or stealing and often killing to get what they want. The 2003 invasion of Iraq by US and other countries was to many the starting gun in a race. Looters raided the National Museum of Baghdad and gained access to many thousands of years of internationally significant history. In the confusion of war, many of these looters had been given a shopping list by international traders, and many objects which weren't on that list, such as this bull-headed liar, were simply smashed because they were not seen as being valuable or sellable. Earlier this year, a similar situation unfolded in Cairo. With the upheaval of the government, looters were sent into the National Museum, and for a couple of days at least, many objects, mummies, and other items of significance were either stolen or smashed, once again because they weren't seen as lucrative. In recent weeks, however, Sahi Hwas has managed to recover many of the objects which were stolen. So what fuels this trade is actually um, demand. It's not, people don't, you know, don't go to an archaeological site to steal objects for the sake of it. They do it because there are people who are willing to buy their objects. And it's this demand and the nature of this demand which unfortunately um, completely destroys uh, the archaeological process. Good archaeological practice revolves around the meticulous excavation of a site, the careful recording and notation of findings, the extremely specialised storage and research of those objects, and finally the findings being displayed to the public in some way, often in a museum. Illegal trade networks specifically try to disrupt this process. Objects are deliberately divorced from their context so that we have no idea where they've come from, and in this way they become useless. They become little more than random bits of history blocked together in a shop window. The people who purchase these objects at great expense really only show them to friends and family in private collections. And in this way, Flinders Petrie once called these collections charnelled houses of murdered evidence. This is because they have lost their value. They are nothing more than things. We don't know when or where they are from. Unfortunately, this is a multi-billion dollar industry globally. And the problem is so bad that with the invasion of Iraq, US troops were actually deployed to certain sites in order to try and stem the tide of looting. We should just stop it, shouldn't we? We should just post a soldier at every um, archaeological site on the planet, make sure it doesn't happen until the site's been properly recorded. Unfortunately, that's not practical. Um, it's also the issues surrounding illegal trade are not straightforward. And um, to imagine that we, that, that we can just say no... Um, is extremely naive. The people at the bottom of these trade networks are often living on only a few dollars a day. They live in extremely difficult conditions. And if someone comes up to them and says, I will give you three weeks worth of money to go and loot the monument on their doorstep, you can hardly blame them for being tempted. To many of these people, archaeology is a legitimate daily resource. And even the mighty UNESCO heritage status can often make things worse.
because anti-American or anti-European sentiment can actually make monuments uh, a, a focus of hatred, and therefore people care even less if they're looted. When it comes down to it, the problem is not the removal of these artefacts, but rather their destruction, both physically and also as evidence. Here, for example, a wall fresco has been fractured in an attempt to remove it from the wall. Archaeology is a limited resource, and when it's gone, it's gone. Whole landscapes are being lost to the action of looting, potmarked by the number of people digging for artefacts. But we cannot lecture these people because we often take advantage of resources that are extremely limited. Control in this situation is in the hands with the people with the money, the purchasers, the ones who drive the trade. But how open are they to listening? So illegal trade is, is extremely complicated. Uh, the issues surrounding it are not straightforward. Um, and uh, I certainly don't have the answers to them. Um, but what is clear is that the people with the power, the people at the top of the chain, the people in places like Chicago and New York, in London, in Paris, the people who do the buying are the ones who fuel this trade. And while they're willing uh, to simply own an object and don't care about what the object is, really, um, then this network's going to continue. Um, there are some answers, such as in Britain, the, the Portable Antiqu Antiquities Scheme uh, has enabled objects um, to be registered in some way. So if someone does find something, they do often get a payout. But the object is registered, and it's also allowed to be um, bidded for, as it were, by uh, by museums, by, by universities, by people who, who will look after and study the object. So perhaps that's a way forward, um, to stop it being a black trade, a black market, allow it to be to become something a little bit more uh, reputable. Um, so the issues are complicated, and hopefully I've, this has been a good introduction to them in some way. Um, if you want to, please, please do feel free to subscribe to the channel, uh, and you'll be able to hear any new videos as I post them, or see them. Um, yeah, we do uh, now have a Facebook page. If you want to follow us, just all you need to do is search for Archeo Super Productions and click like and uh, often things that I can't put into a video go onto that page. Um, of course please do feel free to comment below or send me a question if you have any questions and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Thank you very much.